Good morning. Stanley, come over here. Stanley was over on this side and Lucy was walking around. So Stanley went over to block Lucy because that's the kind of guy Stanley is. Stanley needs to listen to Christian maturity because I don't think he's very mature. Lucy, on the other hand, is very mature. Or maybe she's just older and just doesn't seem to care as much. She's, you can almost see her eyes there. You can see her eyes. <laughs> she's a sweetheart. Aren't you, Lucy Goose? Been my dog for 11 years. Stanley, you're... Stanley, you're a big goober. <laughs> okay. It's an adventurous time at my household. My bathtub is... The drain is plugged up. Use my plunger and it's not seem to work. So I'm gonna have to go to the next step. I don't wanna call a plumber. So we'll see. I've been in my, the sink in there in the bathroom gets clogged up every now and then. And you know, you've seen that on YouTube or on Facebook or something where you put uh, baking powder and vinegar and that, and that works for my sink and um, Anyway, there's too much water in there. I don't think the, <laughs> I, I'm waiting for the water to just kind of drain down and I'll try again. <sighs> Joys of, I guess I'm just losing too much hair. I need a haircut, but there's plenty of it falling off of me. It's my, Lloyd Dean Orr, a member of the Gene Church, one of my first churches I was pastor of. Um, he, his wife, has just really white hair. Um, real, it's you know the, it's not it's it's a uh, hair that it's so white it's attractive. It doesn't look just dingy or something. It's really and I said his his hair his wife's hair turned his wife's hair turned white and his turned loose. He didn't have a hair on his head. I knew him. Well, maybe just a little bit. He he's a good man. Got to have the honor of preaching his funeral. And actually, his wife is the one who gave me this book, Christian Maturity. Okay, let's put you two out. The Battle Axe of Young County. And she's very proud of that. Come on, outside. Come on, come on, Lucy. Go, 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 go. Come on. Oh, you want to stay. Okay, I'm going to let Lucy stay because Lucy won't bother me too much. Or she might. <laughs> she might just want to rub it in that Stanley's outside. We're staying in First Peter today. In like fact, we have the same verses today and tomorrow, I just noticed. 1 Peter 3, 8 and 9. Finally, all of you have unity of spirit, sympathy, love for one another, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or abuse for abuse, but on the contrary, repay with a blessing. It is for this that you were called, that you might inherit a blessing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now our reading from Christian Maturity by Eli Stanley Jones this Wednesday of week 23. The hunger for love. We have seen how deeply love is needed in infants. It is true of others beyond the infant. Is it or is it true of others beyond the infant stage? Must we discuss the need for love as an infantile demand which we outgrow? No, it is basic to human life from childhood to old age. Ashley Montague puts it in these words, as adults, they tend to become difficult people who cannot get along with anyone. They are recognized as cold fish, selfish, egotistical, and uncompromisingly ruthless in their human relationships. They seem to be behave as if they neither cared for other people nor what other people think about them. But this is only appearance, for in reality, more than anything else in the world, they want to care for other people and have other people care for them. These are the people who are suffering from primary effect, hung effect hunger, as David Levy has called it, the hunger for love. One such person tragically remarked, I know it is all there, but it is as if a wall of concrete surrounded my heart, and desperately hard as I try to express it, the warmth won't come out. Then Montague, approaching this whole matter from a purely humanistic point of view, concludes, the greatest of all needs of the human being is the need 
for love. The experience of the feeling conveyed by others that one is wanted, needed, liked, appreciated, valued, and deeply involved with the other or others. And then he adds this significant statement. It is primary nature, and it should also be sound nature for human beings to love one another, as it is primary nurture, nature, as it is, primary nature remains striving to love and be loved, while secondary nature often puts calculated restraints upon such striving and erects barriers deliberately designed to prevent its expression. All this because the true meaning of love has not been understood. To inhibit or prevent the expression of love is to do violence to the needs, to the structure, and to the functioning of the organism. Here the humanistic approach is coming out at exactly the place that religion comes out, at the place of love. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. Oh, especially now at election season when... Oh my goodness. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Here's our prayer for today. Oh Holy Spirit, who are, who is the spirit of love, shed abroad in my heart the spirit of love. With it I live, without it I perish. We all perish. Do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Amen. And our affirmation for the day, I shall not do violence to my being by being unloving today. Jesus is Lord.